Guys, welcome to episode number 10 of the Derby Criminal Life. And to start off this episode, we're currently 15th in the table, 18 points after 18 games. At the minute, that's perfectly fine, but we're only three points off the relegation zone. Um, as long as you get a point per game, generally you do stay up in the Premier League. Um, as you can see, Stoke City only on five points. Not exactly doing too well, and I'm pretty sure Stoke either drew or beat us, so um, not, not the best that we did drop points against them, but nevertheless, we did get beaten by Forrest as well, um, and I think we may have drawn to Burnley in the last minute, so I, I tend to do better against the bigger teams, just because like mentally I'm like, oh, this is going to be a tough game, I've got to try, um, but we've got a team who are pretty close to us in the next game, um, it is Southampton, who are currently in 13th, only a point above us, so if we do win... That'll obviously uh, put us up the table quite a bit, up to 12th potentially, so that'd be quite good. Um, just to go into January with, with a nice bit of gap between us and the relegation zone. Obviously, we've got Southampton and Stoke in this episode. Also, Manchester United, who we did lose 3-0 to in the last episode. Um, but we are at home for the second game, of course. It, it would be nice for these Manchester games and the Stoke City games to be a bit more spread out, but... Sometimes you do get fixtures um, pretty close together. So we do have Sheffield Wednesday in the round of 64 of the FA Cup. Um, pretty pretty okay opponent, obviously, in the championship. We can play a bit of a weaker team, of course. Um, but generally speaking, like January is going to be where we need to improve. We need to get a striker. Um, I think did I, sh I, I may have showed you in the last episode um, that we do have Real Betis in the next round of the Europa League. So they did finish top of their group. I think they've won all of their games. Um, they've got like Nabil Fekir, they've got uh, Canales, um, Mark Bartra, the centre-back. So it's, it's you know, there's there's some good players in that team. So be interested to see how we do. Of course, it's, it's quite nice that we have got the international break um, before that first leg. So then obviously our players are going to be fully rested. So that's, that's really, really good. May play a bit of a weaker team for that Burnley game um, and just hope we can go through in the Europa League. So we'll have to wait and see, of course. So, yeah. In between the two episodes, well, basically happened about yesterday, um, Richard Keir has been sacked now by Derby County. So I think anyway, Lawrence and Bennett probably will be sold either in January or the next window. I, I don't see them staying long term, really. Um, and it's, it's a real shame that they haven't really had a good performance as well since since that happening. And, you know, Koku's given them faith and put them back into the team, but they haven't really repaid him. Um with a real good performance so we do have a transfer here from scott malone um obviously 29 years old isn't going to be growing in stats and we do kind of need to get some funds to uh basically get a new striker so if we can get 2.65 um that'll be absolutely fantastic so let's go into the negotiations to kick off this episode and hopefully um yeah as i said just get some money so i think if i just go for what the uh, recommendations are if we can get 2.65 obviously he's only worth 1.8 um, and there we go, we've accepted that, so that was nice and quick. I could have potentially even got maybe even 3 million for him. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's, you know, that's just under a million more than his current value. Um, as I said, he's 29 years old, he isn't going to be going up in stats. And uh, we do have a couple of players who can play left back already. And we can always look at bringing in a new left back um, with that money as well. But in terms of like backup left backs, we've got... Um, Obviously, Castanag could do a job there. You could always do something like that and put Bogle back at right back. Um, that's definitely one option we do have. Also, we do have Max Bird who can play there. He's 69 rated, and that's six foot tall. Pretty decent stats. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure we've got plenty of players if need be there. Another transfer here from I think a team in the Portuguese league, um, Guimarães. We're going to go for slightly more than what we did with the Turkish club. So. I think we can go up to maybe three million, um, and then maybe negotiate slightly down. But yeah, as long as we can get as much money as possible for Scott Malone, then that's that's definitely what I'm looking to do. Um, they've put a 2.2 .2 in. If we can get like, if we can go up to three million, I'll be more than happy with that. That's a lot of money for a player that isn't exactly featuring too much. Um, I'm going to remove the selling clause since he is 29. It's not exactly going to be used too much, and we'll go for 2.999. Um, <laughs> Obviously, psychologically to the computer, that's that's a cheaper price than the three mil. Um, if we can meet in the middle at uh, 2.95, then we have a very good deal on our hands. And I'm not too sure if I can actually reject the other offer, um, the 2.651, one, 
I don't think you can. That would be kind of cool if you could do that. Obviously, now that we've got a better offer for him. Um, in the past, I think you could. You almost, like, accepted where he wanted to go. But now it's, it's down to Scott Malone where he wants to go. Um, obviously, I want the more money. But we'll have to wait and see. Um, it, I always get this message. And I'm not too sure what it actually means. Like, the captain, to my, in my opinion, just isn't that much of a big deal. Um... Van Bergen does want to play the next game against Southampton. I may look at that since Harry Wilson definitely hasn't performed too well um, in recent times. And we do we do need to get a win in this game. So let's go into the game at home against Southampton. Should be a nice way to kick off the episode. I think I will go for their... Um, they do have some quite nice kits actually, Southampton. I, I think we'll go for their away kit just to, just to mix it up since we won't play it against that again. Um, and we will put Van Bergen onto the bench for Wilson. Wherever he is, where's Van Bergen? There he is. Here we are then at home against Southampton. A pretty nice opponent to kick off the episode. Hopefully, we can start with a nice win at home on Christmas Eve. Let's have a look at their team. They've gone for the 5, I think that is 5-3-2. Um, very pacey strikers in Danny Ings and Che Adams. Alberto Moreno and De Siglia are wing-back. Then uh, Hoot, Toloy and Stevens as the centre-backs. Angus Gunn in goal. Lamina, El Yanusi and uh, Van Aken in the midfield. Lamina quality in that midfield um it is a very good team and that you know we played against this formation against wolves and they absolutely destroyed it so um yeah i'm hoping for something slightly better in this game i've decided to go for Kasnag at the left back position since he is technically a left midfielder um obviously right footed um but does very good at right back and obviously i prefer to play bogle over max low so i'm gonna gonna give this a try and see how we do um yeah, I think we definitely need a striker. I think like the the, the lack of height at striker really has cost us in some games. Um, just not really having a focal point. And obviously Chris Martin is there, but I don't think he quite has the quality for the Premier League games. Southampton with the ball out wide here to Danny Ings. They've got men in the middle waiting. So now with El Yanusi across to Moreno at the left-back position. Trying to get it into the box with Van Aken, but Shinny's there to clear. Chance here for Bowen to bring it forward. Cuts inside Stevens nicely. And get the ball into the box and hopefully get a shot off. That would be decent. And it's into the back of the net. I'm quite surprised that's gone into the top right hand corner because it really didn't seem like it was going in then. I just literally shot because I thought, well, nothing else is going to happen. Um, yeah, nice little goal from Bowen. It is actually the first time I've been playing um, post patch, so I'm not too sure how different gameplay is, how shooting's different, how. Some of the passing and dribbling, I think, slightly different. Um, I don't think it'll affect the computer. It's more me just getting used to the game. But yeah, that was a really, really odd angle. And it went through his legs and went into the back of the net. So I'm not, not going to complain, but it's a nice first goal in the game for Jared Bowen. Four goals for him so far this season. All right, with the ball here. Now into Oscar. Hopefully can feed it back through. Yes, we can. Can we find the back of the net with Jack Murray? He's missed the target. Got to be scoring those kind of goals. Um... And yeah, it, it may be just a confidence thing. I think that's definitely a factor on this career mode. Like, if you've got confident players, they just feel like if you score two goals from Marriott and he's on his third goal there, he scores that because he's just got that confidence. Um, but when he hasn't scored in a few games, it is kind of difficult for him. But maybe he can rectify it here. Through for Oscar. Now into the box. Can he get the shot off? Saved by Gunn and cleared. Chance here to get the ball into the middle. It's gone into the box and into the back of the net with Danny Ings. It was a free header. Should have really been there with Schurz, but uh, maybe even stopped the cross as well out wide. Um, but it is one all in the 30th minute of the match from Danny Ings. It's, um, yeah, it's just one of those where I felt, you know, nothing's really going to happen, but then they just whip it in the box and there's a man free and they get the first call of the season for Danny Ings there, and that is one all. On to Shinny. Now out wide to Yarmolenko. If you can go around... Stevens in the box. It's been taken down and it is a penalty for the Ukrainian captain Stevens there. Taking him out in the box. Um, and we have got the chance quite quickly on to get the goal back into the lead. But yeah, nice bit of skill and then just clipped in the box and there's the penalty. I think we will probably take it with Yarmolenko since he has got the best penalties. Um, haven't actually taken a penalty in about a week. So, yeah, it's, it's one of those. When you're against the computer... You've almost got to trick it because they know because I'm pointing that way. That's the ball. That's where the ball's going to go. So the computer goes, "We'll dive that way." Um, so you almost have to like flick it the other way, like you're playing online. 
Um, yeah, it's, it's just one of those penalties that are just so difficult, and, and they should be really. I, d I don't want to just win penalties and score quite easily. Chance here for Oscar. If you can go around the defender, he just doesn't quite have that yard of pace that I'd quite like that Son Crossing does have, but that is a really risky tackle. Chance here for the counter for Southampton. Danny Ings. 2v1 situation. I'm trying to just cover and stop the shot, but we've just about worked that well there. Chance here in the box with Southampton. It's slipped through, pass across the face of goal, but it is luckily for us offside. I did think it was offside at the time, to be fair. Um, but yeah, really nice passing play from Southampton. So I'm crossing with the ball into Rooney. Trying to play it into Will Hughes in the box. Does a nice bit of skill to get into a dangerous area. Now with the shot and with the goal. Will Hughes, the absolute wonder kid. Well, he's not a kid anymore. He's about 25, but still a wonderful player with a nice bit of skill. And um, we have got the goal there in the last five minutes. Not too sure what he's doing there, to be honest. He is a centre defensive midfielder, just bombing up and uh, playing as a striker. But yeah, it's got us the goal. Really nice uh, shot across. the Maybe the keeper could have done a bit better, but uh, I'm not going to complain. And that is his uh, first Premier League goal for us. And um, could be the all three points for us. Corner for Southampton with two minutes to go. Obviously, we did concede the first goal from a cross. It uh, seems like we have not quite dealt with it yet. Pizarro into uh, Van Aken, now into the box, but great tackle there from Kasnag. Can't quite clear it, though. Still not cleared fully. Pulled across the face of goal, but saved by the goalkeeper. Should have cleared that ages ago, but it just didn't quite get out. Um, but yeah, they've got a corner back in. Cleared the, and there we go. Full time against Southampton. We have won two one. Really good three points. We needed that against a team that's pretty close to us in the table. Um, you know, if we drop points in this game, and then we've got big teams coming up. We've got like Manchester United and Manchester City. I just don't see us getting points against those. So um, yeah, this goal here was like really good play from Southampton, um, but clearly offside. But uh, yeah, it was that it was that kind of thing that game was pretty much on a nice edge we, we probably did deserve to get the win um, which we did in the end transfer here from Freiburg for Dwayne Holmes who hasn't exactly played too many games and uh, three million quid you know if we can get four for him um, and that'd be a great little price for a player that obviously hasn't played but is still quite useful you know in, in like cup games but I just I'd rather sell him now and look to reinvest that in somebody's more likely to grow in stats it's a bit of a shame that he is like 26 you know because on FIFA terms um, you know that that kind of kills them in terms of potential I just don't see him growing so we are going to go up to 4 million for him um, and they've completely rejected that so it is very odd how it works maybe I should have just gone for the 3.8 um, that the game did suggest but it's one of those where you just you got to try and get as much as you can so we did have a deal for Chris Martin, and uh, unfortunately it has broken down, so we'll have to wait and see. I think we did accept another offer for him. Um, so yeah, I'm a bit odd, but we have got a scout report here for Jolinton, who, as I said, like kind of, you know, Jimenez, Jolinton-style player, big tall, with a bit of pace as well, um, is exactly what we kind of need in this team. And obviously at 20 million, probably a little bit too expensive, but you never know if we can get uh, Harry Wilson sold. Um, and a couple of others maybe will just about afford it but uh, yeah into the next game against Manchester United it is at home this time so maybe we'll do slightly better than the last episode where we did lose 3-0 um, and yeah as I said we, we do need suggestions for players because we're in January after this Stoke game so yeah it's going to be interesting as well with fitness obviously playing on the 30 you know we played 24 27 30 second and then you know a little bit of a gap so that's that's nice so yeah, we'll, we'll have to see how we do in that FA Cup game because we may have to play a bit of a rotation team. Maybe even this game, to be honest, we might need to make some rotations. But uh, yeah, we'll actually go for their away kit since obviously they are away. And we'll go for the black kit. And um, yeah, as you can see, Yarmolenko is going to have to be rested. Kastanag, Saliba and probably Hughes. Here we are then for another home game, this time against Manchester United. So it's going to be slightly more difficult and with a slightly weaker team. Um... It's going to be difficult. It's kind of a last chance for Harry Wilson as well. Um, I've given him a few last chances to really give us a performance, but uh, I just can't really seem to get anything out of him. But they've gone for their uh, same formation as us. 
Obviously, David De Gea in goal, Dallo and Short uh, wing back, then uh, Smalling and Twenzebi, Lucas Lever, Fred under, Daniel James, Lingard, and uh, Marcus Rashford. Very good and very young team, you know, you, you, that front four, other than Lingard, of course. Um, but yeah, like, really good um, team for the future. Obviously, that defence, Twenzebi, is going to be quite good and strong. Um, See, so yeah, I'm just hoping for a little bit of a spark from ha Harry Wilson. Obviously, he did score the free kick against them in uh, the Carabao Cup last year. Chance here for Lingard to run into space. Bogle's going to have to trap back, but hasn't fully. He's gone into the box. Going to have to stop that, and we do. Now laid off by Jeff Hendrick for some reason. Into Marcus Rashford, saved by Nubo. And I just don't know what Jeff Hendrick is doing there. I don't know, like, I don't know how the game thought, yeah, we'll just lay it off for him. That just really not that there. Where's that header going? Why why a header so bad this year? It's actually so frustrating. We're, we're only six minutes in, and we've already conceded the first goal of the game. Chance here for Wilson on the overlap. Just about got it off Lingard somehow. Can he get a shot off now? Yes, he can, but he's blocked by his own man, which is a bit unfortunate. But Oscar with a great volley there. Chance here for Wilson down the wing. Can he? Outpace Luke Shaw. Yes, he does. Can he get himself into a decent area in the box? Cuts inside, now into Oscar with the shot, saved by De Gea. Corner for United then, it's gone onto the edge, but cleared by Bogle. Can Marriott get it around the number 19 here? Yes he can, Lucas Lever with the pace now Marriott, hopefully can get himself into the box and get a goal. Can he get the finish? No, De We need a player that can just score that. You know, Rooney, Rooney probably would score that if in that opportunity. It's just not good enough of a finish, really. Um, and, in, and when you're in the Premier League, you've got to make them count. Also with the ball here, cuts back to the edge to Hendrick. Now into Bogle in the box, but taken out. Is that a penalty? Yes, it is. And we have... Ooh, we've also got a setting off for Luke Shaw, but we have just subbed on Wayne Rooney for this penalty. Um, and this is a massive turning point in the game. Bogle... I thought it was on the. I thought it was, you know, outside the box. But yeah, we've just put on Rooney, Rooney, and Jozza soon. Um, and Wayne Rooney with his first touch to score against the team that he is the top goal scorer for. Can he get the penalty into the back of the net? No. I tried moving it. I tried doing something different. But no, it just. I can't get my head around penalties against the computer because obviously online. There's a little bit more you can get in the head of the person, and um, you know if you move your head one way and go the other, it's it's going to be very difficult for them to guess that. But when it's against a computer, it's just like it's next to impossible on ultimate. Marshall into Rashford pulls it back, and there we go. We should have scored that penalty. It's as simple as that, and we didn't. And then they've just done that, and it's just so annoying. It's so it's so annoying. It's ah. Uh, there's no need, like, look. Why are my defenders all dragged across? And why is that so powerful? You know, it's, it's, it's so difficult. We have just gone into attacking, so I may need to move a couple of people around just because it mixes them up for sort of, like, my centre-back goes into centre-mid and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I think it's game over, but, yeah, it's a little bit of a shame. And there we go, full-time against Manchester United. We have lost 2-0. Even though they had 10 men and we did have a penalty... It's just so, it's so, I can't, I can't score. I think I've missed or the keeper saved more penalties um, than we've scored on this, you know, since the patch. It's so difficult against the keeper on ultimate difficulty and with the sliders, of course. So it's just one of those. So there we go. Chris Martin has been sold to Kayaka Respor. I'm guessing they're in the Turkish league. We do get an extra 400,000 for that. Um, it's mainly his wages as well. They're quite high. Um, and obviously we can replace a new player. So we've got another transfer offer for uh, Dwayne Holmes and the talks for Malone has broken down with the team that offered 3.6. So I think the team that we accepted 3.9 for um, is still going on. So we should hopefully get that money and um, that'll be a great help. This time Genoa have put a 3 million bid in. I think if we can go to 3.9... Um, I don't want to go to four because I don't want it to break down. Um, so yeah, if we can get a good deal here for Dwayne Holmes, then we've got a bit of money to play with when we go into the January transfer window just after the Stoke game. So what we'll do is we'll just add uh, the 900 there 
and I'll be more than happy to accept that. Um, they seem to be sticking at their price, so I'm going to go hopefully for the halfway point at about five. Obviously, it's nice to get some money more, um, and there we go. They're accepting that, so that's that's good. Um, it's good to at least get some money. Obviously, I would have preferred towards the four million mark, but anything's better than nothing. So I'm just going to quickly show you the players that I have actually added to the transfer hub. Obviously, the players that you guys have suggested and uh, a few others. We've got uh, Rian Brewster here. The thing is about him, he's you know he's only five foot eleven and not exactly the strongest. He's you know pretty um weak so he, he's okay you know 70 strength's okay but i would I prefer somebody in the 80s uh, we have got colin grant here six foot tall obviously taller than brewster and um you know it's, it's quite a nice interesting player colin grant obviously very fast indeed with 91 sprint speed and um, we do have ibrahim sasoka here i saw this guy linked to newcastle in real life and uh, looks like an absolute tank in the midfield whether we need that position or not i just thought i'd add it because it looks interesting Funes Mori here from Southampton. I think he only joined in the summer, so we may not be able to look to get him. Um, and he does have the injury-prone trait. Christian Benteke. I think if you're looking at players, you know, a big tall striker to boot the ball up to, Benteke is your perfect option, really. Um, only cost us about five million and uh, pretty cheap wages. Jolinton again, a little bit expensive, but would be the perfect mould. Uh, Hurtado here, six foot tall from Buenos Aires. Um, very good as well, you know, 80 strength, that's exactly what we need. Mitrovic, again, great option. Um, I've mainly just added tall players, um, but we have got a few here as well. I think this guy's transfer listed, um, but I could be wrong. I just thought I'd add him to the scout report. Um, Sims, a bit bit younger, probably wouldn't be quite as good quality yet. Um, Pickley here from Atalanta looks quite good. He's only 19 years old, 6 foot tall. Um... Not the strongest, but obviously can grow in stats quite nicely since he is very young. We've got Arp from Bayern Munich, uh, Jonathan David from uh, Torino, that is. Obviously can play centre-forward, striker or cam. Um, not exactly the strongest and not exactly the tallest, but maybe if we need another another player, five-star weak foot's really nice. Selke here is at Everton, so I don't think we'll be able to afford him. Uh, but yeah, he's the perfect mold, you know, six foot four, I think he is, and 80-plus uh, strength. Really good indeed. Um, Soldado here. Not the... Uh, no, it's not Soldado. So Soldano. Um, again, pretty good. You know, not exactly the tallest, but uh, we'll do a decent job. But then we've got Jimenez, you know. I might just try. We'll see how much money we've got. And we'll try and get Jimenez because he was so good against us. I just don't want to play him against him again. Um, and we also have Luke Thomas here at 70 rated. That's that's not bad for a 21-year-old uh, winger if we, if we need that kind of option. Into the game then against Stoke City at the uh, Bet365 Stadium, I'm pretty sure it's called. Um, I think we'll go for our... I just prefer the black kit, I think. I just prefer the way it looks and all that stuff. Um, so we'll go for that kit. Probably going to have to put Rooney in for this game. Um, but then again, Oscar hasn't done that well anyway, um, since we have been playing him. We have got a few players back from um, being rested from the last game. Um, but we do need to put Scherz in for Bielik. Here we are then at the uh, Bet365 Stadium. I think it's called just the Stoke City Stadium because, yeah, they can't use uh, betting companies on the game. So looking at their lineup, they've gone for the 4-1-2-1-2 uh, formation. Um, it is a very weak Premier League team, but uh, we did obviously play against them last season. And I think we lost both times um, because obviously they, they were top of the league and won the league quite convincingly. No Jack Butland, it is Bursic in goal. Bauer and uh, Jukilarod at uh, left back. Then Martins, Indian, Campos, Imbula, Indai, and Gerhardt, and Nick Powell in the midfield. Then uh, Benekfobe and Hernandez up top. Both uh, very pacey strikers. And um, yeah, Scott Malone playing his last game for the club, I'm pretty sure. I don't think he'll be playing again after this. It's just. Uh, I'm going to have to think about what we're going to do. I may, I may just look to play Max Bird at left back, to be honest, because he's not exactly getting too many games in the midfield. Corner for Stoke in the 12th minute. It's gone into the box with the header and with the goal. I think that is number four, who is... I'll have to wait a minute. Campos, the centre-back, I think that is, with the goal. It's just one of those, like, I can't... They're so random corners. Like, you, you whip it in about ten times, you might score one in ten. Um, 
And there's, there's no real way of preventing or scoring them. Bula with the ball here. Lays it off for Gregory with the shot off the post and into the back of the net. I think that is Lee Gregory, the former Millwall man, to pretty much kill off the game there. It's, um, I don't know, it's just like I can't really, a little bit unlucky, you know, from the keeper to save it and hit it into the post. But, yeah, it's just so difficult. I think it's their formation as well. I find it quite difficult to uh, really break them down. There we go, full time. Another loss, 2-0 this time against Stoke City, or bottom of the league. And uh, we may be in the relegation zone if results have gone um, a certain way. So, yeah, it's just, I don't know. Just, the corner early on really killed us in terms of they've got the goal and they can just hold on. But we didn't get a single shot on target. You know, it's, it's I'm just going to, not even going to bother with the press conference. So there we go. We have sold Scott Malone. There's an extra two million added to the uh, transfer budget. So that's good to see. Um, so yeah, given Casanaga, he's done quite well in the team. Uh, 79 rate of course um, but yeah let's go into the January transfer window and um, I might I might wait until the next episode to do anything really I'll, I'll just see how things go um, I think it will probably go straight up to this uh, Sheffield Wednesday game even though I press stop simulation and there you go as you can see the game's great great response um, yeah we've got a few scout reports here um, I don't think there's anyone really that major this guy's you know, he's pacey. Well, he's got 89 acceleration. No real strength, um, but 73 sprint speed. So a bit of an odd one. Pretty good play, you know, 74 rated. Um, not exactly the type of player we're looking for at the minute. So, uh, yeah, we've, we've only got about five or six days for these final scout reports to come back. So we'll probably wait for those um, in the next episode to do any transfers. So let's have a quick look and see where we are in the standings before we do and finish off the episode. So with that loss against Stoke City, they have gone on to 10 points now. Um, so I don't think our record's gonna stand, which is a bit of a shame with the 11 points. But uh, yeah, it's one of those where we are, in, you know, six points clear at the minute, but you know, with a few tough teams coming up, could quite quickly turn around. So I'm kind of happy where we are, you know. I'd, I'd like us to have a bit of progression in this career mode. I don't want us to be top half straight away and pushing for the Europa League places so I'm quite glad you know with Europa League football as well um, we're kind of struggling this season to do that well in the Premier League um, and I don't know if I'm that bothered about the FA Cup we'll see what kind of fitness the players are um, but with so many fixtures and you know the Europa League I'm just not too sure if I can really afford to uh, play the uh, FA Cup but I didn't actually realise we have Forest on the last game of the season at home. So yeah against Stoke we lost 2-0 and we uh, drew only 2-2 at home so you know we're only a point against the bottom of the league isn't exactly great um, and we've pretty much given them half of their points so the thing is we're beating the teams that we should be beating and we're losing against the teams that we should be losing you know if we don't do well we lose um, and most of the time that's the case so yeah, hopefully you guys did enjoy this episode. Obviously, we're in the January transfer window now. We currently have about four million to spend, but we do still have a couple of players to sell. I'm going to see if I can actually sell, um, if I can transfer list anyway. Um, Harry Wilson. I've also seen a bit of growth there as well. So yeah, with those players sold, obviously we got rid of Martin Waghorn and uh, Scott Malone. The squad is a lot thinner now, and we've had a bit of growth and downgrade to players. Um, Carson going to a 69 and Tom Huddleston. Um, obviously, Dwayne Holmes also potentially going to be sold. Um, and yeah, we've had a bit of growth only to Will Hughes and uh, Saliba, I think. I don't think anyone else grew by any stats. So yeah, I think what I'm going to probably do is look to play this kind of defence. Um, and I'm going to look to see what we can do with the left-back department and... Maybe bring in a right back is what we could do as well. Obviously, we're going to put Castagne there for the time being. Um, I just I prefer Bogle over Max Lowe. I think Bogle really good going forwards. Um, but yeah, hopefully, you guys did enjoy this episode. Leave a like, rating if you did enjoy, it, and see you soon. Bye.